So we're going to start with our structured warm up. Awesome. Good. Awesome. They're doing structured warm-up. Yes, they are. And we shall do the same. We'll do the same. In the V to start. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Awesome. Okay. Which side do you want to start on? This side? No, you're in the center. But we're going to go up this side. Okay. One, two, oops, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Let's do the other side. This side. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. Diagonal. <coughs> no, diagonal. This way. <coughs> we this way. We're doing this diagonal right here. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. Let's do the other diagonal now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. Now we'll do figure eight. Do you want to start with straight? Okay. So I'll be diagonals. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. Now I'll be straight, so you be diagonals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good job. Long diagonals, we're ready. Hey Tim, you can hop in and replace me. Long diagonals with Cheryl. Uh, long diagonals with Cheryl. Into the kitchen, long diagonals. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, switch sides. Ten long diagonals the other way. Awesome. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. 
Okay, good stuff. Let's do it one more time since we just had uh, Tim join. Switch. Yeah, same partners. Just uh, do it one more time. I'll see if anybody's at the door. Okay, these are dinks. There should be no backswing, no backswing, no backswing. Just keep it up front. Okay, long diagonals? Let's do our long diagonals. I'll check the door one last time. Okay. <laughs> Total chaos. Total chaos. More than 10. Okay, good stuff. Okay. Uh, Gay's going to be here in about 10 minutes, yeah. so uh, we're going to get started without Gay. Um, we're going to be warmed up now. You've got your joints moving and your, your feet moving. Um, we're going to start with a little game. I want to see you guys play. Well, we'll start a game at 5-5-2. Five, five, um, you guys can serve uh, against you too. And then, or you guys can actually serve, so we'll just Cheryl the ball. And thank you. Awesome.
Nice volley. That was a great drop. Great drop. Out. Let me get that door before it turns into a problem. Is that to your backhand, Tim? I was in. Nice shot. Good little volley battle. He gets him nice and low. Oh, nice try. Out. Is that grip working for you, Tim? Good. Good battle. We're just going to call Cheryl hands from now on. Hands. He's got good hands. Little out. Done. And you stayed out of the kitchen. As she stopped about eight inches back, she had lots of room. Yeah, we're going to play to 11. We're going to stop at 11. Yep. I didn't realize it was going to go on this long. Working for you? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Except for her. Exactly. So, last week we worked on um, 
uh, just controlling the direction of the volleys. Uh, and then in the second hour, we worked on our volley recognition drill, recognizing when we're volleying up versus volleying down, volleying horizontal. I want to continue that in the second hour because I think that's a foundational kind of drill for moving from intermediate to advanced. In the first hour, Andre, I want to address a couple of simpler things. One is, we were, I was just watching you play, um, and I saw what I usually see, which is a lot of swing volleys, when we should be just doing block volleys or simple push volleys. Um, so I'd like to take some of the swing volleys out. We don't always have to be hitting volleys deep. They don't always have to be powerful. We could be going for sidelines. We could just be doing those, those little drop volleys to the front. So I want to work on some of that. Um, the other thing I want to work on is our volley positioning. So we can take balls here, 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 or here. These are our four positions, right? Reaching on the backhand, left hip, right hip, or right shoulder, and then outside of our body. So three of these four are backhands. Um, some of the players in the group are trying to hit forehands from here. They're trying to hit, they're, obviously they hit forehands out here, but they're, they're taking forehands here, and sometimes they're even reaching out to take forehands on this side of their body. So I just want to kind of get that, that out of our game if we can, just develop the discipline of taking volleys correctly on the, on the right side, of, on the proper side of our body. So I want to start with that. Um, let me, uh, let's start with the volley positioning and then with the paddle positioning and then we'll move on to uh, the, the swing volleys. Um, they're going to kind of come together into one thing anyway. Um, so let me demonstrate, I'll demonstrate with Susan, get everybody else right along this wall here if you don't mind, right along the wall. Susan, you're going to back up, you're just going to feed me balls that I'm going to volley back to you. Okay, so my, con wait one sec, contact point is obviously going to be out front. Um, I don't want, I want to try not to let the ball get behind me. And one, two, sorry, one, two, three, four, on my four volley positions, okay? All right. so, oh, sorry, and I did exactly what I didn't want you to do. Let's go to the four hits there. That's my bias. I often do the chicken wing. Oh, there we go. So I want to get let get a little deep. I want to try and take it a little further out front if I can. Oops. That was a little high. And one more. All right. So you can see my contact position. I'm trying to keep it out in front. I don't have to hit it very hard. Um, let me show you what a swing volley is, uh, just to show you what I don't want you to do. Uh, either side. Oops, sorry. That wasn't a very good swing volley. So give me give me a forehand side. So a swing volley is that, right? Actually take a full swing at the ball. Okay, should do it again. Oops, no. I got one. It's okay. That happens. All right. So I'm seeing a lot of these swing volleys where we're we're hitting volleys and swinging at them. What I'd like to replace them with, thank you, thank you. What I'd like to replace them with, obviously, is just contact out front, little block volleys, right? Nice, easy contact out front. So there's a tiny little bit of a swing there, but the racket doesn't. The racket never gets behind me, right? It's the same with dinking. We don't want the ball to get behind us. The same with drop shots. Same with ground strokes. We always want the ball to be out front. Okay, if we can. Okay, does so everybody understand what I'm looking for? So, tight grips translate into out of control balls. So you need to find a grip pressure that's soft enough to control the paddle, but firm enough um, to not knock it out of your hand or make it flap around. The, the grip is important, but also the axis in which you're hitting the ball. So if you imagine the handle extending in a straight line through the paddle, um, right to the tip, you want to hit it on that, that, that line if you can. Now, you can't always. Um, uh, on my forehand side, I'm not particularly coordinated, so I hit it off center a lot. On my backhand side, I'm much more coordinated, so I hit it on the center a lot. But that's our goal, right? And to constantly improve at that. Good question. 
Any other questions? OK, so let's pair up. Uh, we'll have two people driving and two people volleying here. Oh, I want to mention this, too. I've been watching a lot of video on you guys. And so um, my decisions about the stuff that we're going to work on, a little bit of it comes from the game that we play beforehand, but really 99% of it comes from the videos that I'm watching. Um, I, what I've done now is I, start rec I record our morning sessions, and then I go to the store, I upload them to our YouTube channel. And then while I'm stringing rackets, you guys are up on the screen. So for six hours, I'm reviewing video while I'm stringing rackets. On busy days, I, don't, I can't look at the screen that much. But yesterday was quiet. So I watched the other, my group yesterday for like six hours. But it, it's very useful. It's helping me pick out. Some people in the group do talk a lot. You're not the worst offender. All right. So I want to. I don't, I don't want a lot of balls exactly, yeah. Just, we're going to try this with one ball if we can. So, exactly. Um, I don't mind a few balls around, but, but um, because these videos are posted on YouTube, I don't want anybody, you know, crying and whining and complaining that you have balls on the court. Cause you know how the world is, right? Let's do these as ground strokes. Ground stroke. Let's do them as ground strokes. So you're going to drop it on the ground and then hit it. There we go. Yep. So that's the swing that I'm talking about. You just really want to receive it. Turn your paddle to receive it. Okay. And then block it back. Without you, you have a tendency to swing at everything. That was good. Much better. That feel good? All right. So I'm going to give you a, a, a small tip. You're, what I, you're doing what I call punching, which means you're, you're, you're poking, not punching, you're poking. So that means you, you wear, your racket's going forward and then quickly back. What I'd rather see is smooth line towards the target, so one continuous motion. Tough one. Here you go, Tim. Tim, slow down your swing speed so you give her a little friendlier feed, okay? Awesome. Okay, everybody, hold the balls for a second. We're going to use Susan as our anchor. I want everybody to rotate around Susan, please. Okay, I, I, I want to introduce a concept. I think I've talked about this many times in the past, but out here is weakness, in here is strength, right? So the further you let a ball get outside of you, the more you straighten your arm and disengage your bicep, tricep, the weaker you're going to become. Right? So one of the things you want to think about with the volley is keeping your core close to where you're taking the ball. Right? So as soon as the ball comes off of, your, uh, off of your feeder's racket, two things are going to happen. One is you're going to start to turn. You're going to pick which paddle face you're going to be hitting the ball with. So that's going to start to turn before your arm comes back. 
The other is simultaneously you're going to be moving your body to get it close to the line that the ball's coming at you. I'll go get the door. Um, so think about that. Um, remember that your core close to your body is strength, further out is weakness. How you doing, Gay? Good morning. Good, how are you? I'm well, thank you. All right, last hit. Good job. You guys are going to back up now. Susan and uh, Aisha are going to come forward. Yeah. So what I saw there was a swing. Yeah. You're swinging. Remember block and a little bit of a push. So resist the urge to poke. What? Right? Resist the urge to poke. Oh, okay. And poke is when you push it forward yeah. and pull it back. Move it forward and go all the way on that line. Right? <laughs> yeah, so that, that that was awesome. That was that okay. my Yeah. Much better. Yeah, good job. Here you go. Come on over here, Gay. Okay. Pause for a second. Okay, another another small thing. We have a tendency when we're doing volley drills to stand in what I call a football stance, a really wide stance, because we know a volley's coming towards us. Okay? And that's the position you probably want to be in at the moment of impact. But prior to impact, you need to have your feet under your hips so that you can move to get in line and then get down, right? If you stand here and the ball's going wide, you're going to end up stretching. You're not going to take the step, right? So feet, restore yourself to feet under your hips every time. And then as the ball's coming towards you, that's when you get down in your stance. That's when you start to lower yourself into a squat, okay? I'm going to work you in, Gay. I just got to get going here. Good. Very nicely done. Nice, Susan. So what we're working on is keeping the racket up front. We're, so we're, the, the two things we're working on today are our contact points. So the four volley contact points, outside, right hip, right side, center of our body or right hip, yeah. and then outside. Okay, so one, two, three, Four, right? And the reason we're working on that is we have some people in the group who are trying to get four hands from here, right? And even some that are trying to come around and take four hands off of this side. Um, so that's one of the things. And then the other is the tendency for people to hit swing volleys, right? Instead of instead of blocking them out front, people are bringing the racket back behind them and swinging. So we're trying to avoid those today too. So I'm going to work in a second here. Awesome. Good stuff, everybody. Okay, we're going to rotate. Gay's going to come in. You're going to come over here. Susan, you can come over here now. We don't need an anchor now that we have an odd number. So, Cheryl, Cheryl you're there. Okay. Sorry? No, you're going to stay at the line. Feeders. Try and keep your feeds below head level. 
I'd rather you take something off of your off of your pace and give them a friendly feed that they can work with. Aisha, can you come around me on this side? You and I are going to work here. This is going to be our nap. Okay. All right. So you just don't you don't need balls. That's just going to be our nap. Okay. So you're going to come right up. In, or sorry, you're going to be on this side. I'm going to be on this side. All right. So you did one of these, right? Just block. Okay. There you go, much better. Yep. Beautiful. Yep, you got it. Okay, everybody, let's rotate one position. You can be there. Tim, you're going to come and work with me here, buddy. Okay. You, you can go there, Susan. All right, Tim, you and I are going to work here. You're going to, this is going to be our nap. This is going to be our nap, okay? Oh, oh. now I'm giving you bad feeds. There we go. You got it. All right, let's rotate one position. Then you're in now. Gaze over here with me. This is going to be our net. This, this little hopper here is going to be our net. Beautiful. Ah, right there. That's what I was trying for. So that's the one I'd like to take out of your game. You're going to use it sometimes. I do it too sometimes. Everybody does it. But what I'd rather see there is, is a forehand. So you can do a little bit of a slide where you slide your body out of the way and open up the forehand. Right now it makes you very, very predictable. If I hit a ball to that spot, I know it's coming over here with the same spin on it every time because you hit that shot every time. If I give you a second option on this side, it's going to make you less predictable. It's going to make you harder to play against, right? So let's work on that. Nice. Tim, that was a nice block. Way to go, Aisha. I know. Best oh. feeder in the world. That's why. Ready? Oh, did it again. That's the one we want to avoid, okay? There you go. That's it. Good slide. Okay, you got it. That's what I want you to work on. Every time you get one of those balls today, I want you to try and hit one of those shots, okay? Awesome, everybody. Let's rotate one position. Susan, I'm going to work with you now. This is going to be our net.
So that, that was the poke that I was talking about. Yeah. We don't wanna we don't wanna push out and pull back. Yeah, just nice and smooth towards your target. Oops, sorry. Much better. Yeah, much better. Yeah, good. You can have that one, I'll take this one. Good, stop. Oops. Good stuff. Okay. Um, like I find a quick poke's hard. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to hit it that way, you can. There's no law that says you have to hit it. The the advantage, the disadvantage to the poke is it's all about timing, and you're going to lose some directional control. Whereas if you have a a, a line that you're following through, um, your timing doesn't have to be perfect. So, for example, you're playing in the wind, and the ball moves a half an inch or three quarters of an inch off target. If you're doing the poke, your your timing might result in a bad shot. But if you have a longer, smoother stroke, you're going to be more consistent. Um, the other thing I'm noticing, and this is not related to that, it's a little separate, but because your stance is so wide, instead of taking a step out to get a ball, you often tip I over do, do. and one leg comes off the ground. So if you work on the, the, I would consider that to be more important than even this poke issue, is getting your feet under your hips so that you can take the step out rather than doing the, the one leg. The, the, <laughs> The pirate block. <laughs> All right, everybody. Good work. Okay, let's grab a drink, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to work on our second drill. Good work. How are you feeling? Puffin. Puffin? It's good. Puffin's good. Drink, it's not a meeting. I know. Come on, guys. Hey, okay, guys, it's a drink, it's not a meeting. <laughs> All right, get everybody along the side wall so I can demonstrate, except for Susan. Susan, I'm going to use you as my feeder. The world's greatest feeder is going to feed me balls. All right, so we're going to have four people hitting. We're going to have one person spotting, and we're going to be rotating through. The spotter is going to be learning to recognize a swing volley from a not swing volley. Okay? So what we're watching for spotters is anytime the racket comes back behind, so my feet are here, anytime the racket comes behind my toes, we're going to call that a swing volley. Okay? So you're watching for swing volleys. 
if you spot a swing volley amongst the two volleyers, you're going to get to replace them. Right? So you're going to work on your recognition skills. Let's make, let's show you what that looks like. So you guys are going to be my spotters right now. You're watching me. Susan's going to give me feeds. Is that a swing volley? No. What about that one? That wasn't actually a swing volley, it just got behind me, but we're going to use that as our definition. Let me do it again. So, was that a swing volley? It did go behind my toe, yeah? So, we're going to, we're going to call anything behind my toe, we're going to call a swing volley. Because we want to be in the habit of keeping the racket out in front of our toes. This is where swing volleys start. If you're getting the racket back behind your toe, you're probably going to be hitting swing volley. Okay? Oh, that would have been a swing volley, right? Oh, what was that? That's ah, swing volley, yeah. It was a really obvious one. Okay. All right. So, by calling everything behind my toes a swing volley, it's going to force you guys to keep the racket out front, right? And that's where we want the racket on volleys anyway. So we're going to call it a swing volley if it's behind the toes. Okay? So, uh, Gay, you're over there as a feeder. Cheryl and Aisha, you're here. You're going to start off as our first spotter, okay, Tim? And I want you to be merciless. If you think you spot, if you think you spot a ball, a, a ball behind the toes, Do you have to stand on the kitchen line to take volleys? No, absolutely not. No. And I encourage, especially people who have slower eye-hand coordination, slower hand speed, back up a little bit. You're going to get yelled at by the 4.0 players, but if you're not a 4.0 player, who cares? And relax a little. You're just tense. That was a good one. A little, it was offline, but it was your paddle was prepared early. Look at these guys. They're too good at it now. Oh, that one came back. Did you see that? It was a nasty feed, but you're in. <laughs> Okay, now you're watching these two. Be merciless. Merciless. <laughs> okay, let's rep, change roles. You two can back up. You two can come forward. These guys are not giving us any swing volleys, so we got to try and get you. That behind? Okay. Remember the height of your partner, Tim. Remember the height of your partner. Very nice. I love the push there. There you go, Tim. You got one? Okay. Very nice vision. Very oh, good. That was sweet. Very nice volley. Yeah. Stay home. Yeah, good. That was awesome. Ah, oh, forehand gay. What's that? <laughs> Okay, well, you guys aren't giving Cheryl anything, so I gotta rotate, yeah. Okay, Jay, watch them relentlessly. No mercy. No mercy. Oh. 
Here we go. Is that a swing volley? Yeah, that was a swing volley. Yeah. Yeah. So we're seeing one second. You know, you're going to notice a pattern that when they're over your head like this, you're going to swing volley. So what do you do when a volley's up here? Let it go. Let it go. Let it go out. Even for the drill, yeah? Yeah? We don't want you to we don't want you to have the habit of taking volleys out of the sky. Good move, Gay. That's awesome. Don't forget to wish. There we go. Yeah. Oh, there's a swing volley. It's over your head. That, what was that? Was that okay? Okay. Good forehand. That was a nice forehand. Good forehand. Oh, there you go, Tim. Okay, let's stop. Hold the balls. Okay, we're in the we're gonna have a little competition now. We're gonna have three lives. You get three lives. Everybody starts with three lives. You lose a life if you're a volleyer and you hit the ball out. If you're a feeder and you hit the ball out, or if our spotter busts you for a swing ball. Right? Right? We're gonna go until two people are eliminated. And then our game is going to stop. Okay? And we are going to rotate. Might have let go. Okay, one more ball, then we're rotating. Okay, I gotta rotate. Rotate one position, Susan, you're in. Who's gonna lose their first life? Will it be Cheryl? Oh, look at this. Watch for swing volleys. Spotter, you're a spotter. Watch, watch the swing volleys. Go. Just keep it in the court. That's all we're trying to do right now is keep it in the court. Your stance, you don't want to be on one foot. You have a kitchen ball. I have a kitchen ball. I never specified that. Oh, okay. 
We're going to have to make this harder because you guys are just too good at this. We've been going for four minutes now and nothing's happened. Okay. If you hit a ball into the net, you lose a life. If you, if you commit a kitchen fault, you lose a life. Right? So we've added those two onto our existing condition. Tim, you should have let that go. Instead, you're, you lost a life. Okay, sub in. Sub in for him. Now you're a spotter, Tim. Try and catch them. Okay, you lost a life. Here, here, here. Okay, rotate, rotate out. Watch for the swing ballers and kitchen faults. Swing ballers and kitchen faults. Oh, uh oh, you could have let that one go out. Have you, have you lost one? Has anybody lost two yet? Okay. Remember your feet. That was better. You ended up so. Don't worry about that. That was better because you didn't end up normally you would have just gone like that right so that, that's good that's improvement even even though you lost the life there it was still improvement ah oh, i gotta call that a swing volley Very nice, nice smooth. Okay, let's rotate. Yeah, let's rotate. Let's rotate two positions. One more, guy. You guys have been feeding long enough. Let's rotate. Who's in? It's okay. She can let it go. Good lead. Okay, we're gonna go one more, one more, and then we're gonna switch games. Okay, well done. I have never seen a group of five people get through with nobody losing three lives, but uh, you guys, you guys are champions. Well done. We're gonna play a game now, but though before we do, what what are your questions from what we've done so far today? Yep, she's giving herself space, and that's fair. Yep. So you're going to see a lot of stuff on the internet, and you'll hear from 4.0 plus players that you absolutely have to stand at the line. If you want to be a professional player, yes, but if you want to play in the 3.5 to 4.0 range, you don't have to do that. Right? If you need extra time, give yourself extra time. 
one athlete is not exactly the same as the next athlete. Um, I, I don't have the same coordination that some athletes have, so you notice that I tend to stand further back. Um, so I don't, I don't fault you on that at all. I think that's a good strategy. And I think you were saying the same thing, right? It's a good strategy. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yep. All right. Yep. In your face? Yeah. Yeah. So, a couple of options, okay? One is the slide, right? Right? The other is the, the stop sign hide. <laughs> you, just, you just put it up and block it. Right? That's, just, that's just survival right there. Um, so, yeah. And the reaction is, so, and you do this a lot to people. You hit it right at their face, right? At kind of this zone right here. And people's reaction is to put the paddle up and block it, right? What you need to train yourself to do is to duck it, right? Move out of the way and let it go. Because if it, especially if it's coming up towards your face, it's almost certainly going to go out, right? So in that case, we don't want to be volleying those ones. We want to be letting them go by. And it's part of why in these drills we want to keep our feeds down, and if the feeds are high, let them go. I know you don't want to chase the ball all the time, but if you put yourself in the habit of constantly chasing the high feeds, then you get into a game, and what happens? Exactly. Okay, let's play a real game now. We're going to play a sub-in game. We've got about uh, ten minute, eight, to, 8 to 10 minutes, so that should give us time for almost a full game. Um, and you're going to sub in on errors, just like we usually do. Um, and uh, am I going to set a condition? So today we're trying to do volleys. The condition I'm going to set is I don't want to see any of these chicken wings, right? Or across the body volleys. We're going to call those faults. And I'd like not to see any swing volleys. It would be a lot harder to not do a swing volley in a game than it is in a drill when you're conscious of it. Okay? So whoever's on the sideline is going to be spotting. As soon as that happens, that's an automatic fault. The point stops. And you replace it. Okay? Yeah, so that's fair. That's a fair point. You, if you're going to do a swing volley from the back court, I suppose that's fair, right? Um, we're, what we're, we're trying to avoid here are swing volleys when we're up at the kitchen. Right? So you're going to have to use some discretion, whoever the spotters are, use some discretion. But you're right. I mean, if you're way back here and you're trying to hit the ball long distance, you might hit a swing ball. Okay? Thanks, sir. All right, play a regular game. You're a spot and you're spotting for faults. You sub in as soon as you see a fault. Or if there's an error. Oh! Error! That was called out? Yeah. Okay. Nice volley. Good volley. You don't have to apologize for that. That was awesome. That was a winner, exactly. I guess that was a swing volley, but that was a put away. She was hitting down on it, so we're not going to punish that. That was an overhead, not a swing volley.
So you're watching for you're watching for faults. Gay, Gay was running out of the kitchen like there was a rattlesnake in it. No, hang on. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. But it's an overhead. Yeah. Yeah. And so we, we, a vol, an overhead is a volley, but it's a special kind of volley that has its own name. So. Nice volley, Tim. Oh, some out. I go off your body? Yeah, so that's it. That's not up. <laughs> Went off his chin. Rip is working out well for you. That's awesome. Changed your life? That's awesome. Wow. Tim's grooving on that new grip. That was uh, this is a really good volley. Well done, Gay. Oh, nice try, Aisha. You can sub in. I'm just coming to the other side here. I gotta move around a little bit. Whoa. Uh oh. Fill out. Zip, zip doesn't help you when the ball gets behind you, does it? Not calling any faults there? No. Okay. It's up to you. It's your call, buddy. Oh. 
Oh, good death, Susan. You almost broke my microphone. That was an excellent return, Cheryl. It was like an inch from the net. I guess hitting it out was punishment enough, right? Eh? Yeah. All right, you guys did great today. Thank you very much. How did, uh, uh, what are your questions from today? Do you have any questions? Anything about that in the game that's like, yeah. feeling a lot of different focus. Remember, it got the rack out of front? Exactly. Totally different from so many times. Yeah. Yeah. Right here, you can't even see yeah. the ball, so you're not going to. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's coming back before the front tries to step back. Yeah, sometimes you have to do a step back. Sometimes you, like if the ball comes in on you, sometimes you've got to turn and do a little step back volley. That, that happens. Um, and it, uh, people are often intimidated, especially on their blocks, by the pace that people are hitting at them. And they get a little intimidated by the pace. So what I encourage you to think about is the moment that ball, that ball leaves Aisha's racket if she's hitting a ball towards me, I own that power. Right? That power belongs to me. She's no longer in control of that ball. So I'm, I'm watching that ball and I'm waiting for it to come off the racket. And now it's coming towards me. I own that power. I can use that power to deflect deep. I can soften up. I can guide to the, direct to the sidelines. I don't need any power because she's provided it all to me. Now that's my power. It's just a matter of directing the ball. So if you get your racket out front, you just use that power to deflect it rather than feeling like you. Some people feel it's an instinctive thing. The balls hit hard at them that they have to swing hard back. Right. You don't need to add power to that power. If you add power to that power, quite often that's how you lose control. So just accept the power that they're giving you well, and you use it. Yeah. Exactly. Use the power to access. Yeah, yeah. If you're swinging and moving, and the ball's coming at you fast, that's just a recipe for no control, isn't it? Good observation. Anything else we want to talk about? All right, let's have a drink, and we're going to move on for a second hour. We're going to do some drills. Drink, not a meeting. Well, actually, you can have a little meeting now if you want, because it's between hours. A little meeting of the social committee.